time, oh. big time, big time, big time, big time, big time. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Big Time. Um, today is Thursday, the 23rd of Feb. Well, by the time this goes up, we'll be one week away. Um, we'll be exactly one week away from the Switch launch, and I am hella excited. If you know me, then you know this is all I've been talking about for the past, you know, shit, since basically January, since we got the presentation. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I just got back from EB Games, and I rolled real deep on this one because I traded in my Wii U, my Wii, my 3DS, a whole bunch of 3DS games, a whole bunch of Wii games, and a whole bunch of Wii U games and also a handful of PlayStation 4 games. So, so I've traded everything on this. I'm going all in on the Switch. I'm gonna have no other Nintendo consoles bar the NES Classic Mini um, and my PlayStation 4. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the Switch. It's gonna be a big part of my life. Next Friday, I've actually got the day off of taking annual leave so I can dedicate the whole day to the Switch. I'll be doing an unboxing. I'll be doing an unboxing of the limited edition Legend of Zelda that I got my hands on today, very excited about. And, you know, basically just a couple of reacts and impressions videos. And if I get a chance, I might get to do some, um, I guess, sort of post review stuff. Um, I don't have some, any game capture stuff yet. I was hoping to pick up an Elgato HD60 before the Switch came out, but that didn't really happen. So, can't really do some Let's Plays that I would have liked to have done, but I'll definitely be posting some impressions on you know, life with the Switch. Um, but today, I just want to focus on my top five most anticipated Switch games. Straight off the bat, guys, number five has got to be Ultra Street Fighter 2, I might get this right, The Final Challenges. Now, I'm not a huge fighting game guy, um, but I did cut my teeth with Street Fighter 2. I remember going to the arcades as a kid and playing it and just loving it. I remember talking on the playground with kids about how to do Hadoukens, you know, quarter circle forward, hit that punch button. Um, I even remember when the movie came out, like Street Fighter was just a huge IP. Um, I remember going to my friend Kurt Mays from primary school. I went to his house for the first time. We had an SNES and we played Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo there. And you know, it's just, for me, that is a nostalgic game, and I'm super excited it's coming to Switch. I'm definitely going to have to pick it up, because I'm going to throw a Joy-Con to my mate, I'm going to grab the Joy-Con, and we're going to play Street Fighter 2 on the go. I mean, as far as fighting games go, that is as good as it gets for me. This one's got the classic pixelated mode, just like you remember back in the day, and it's also got a HD mode for when they did the HD remake um, last year for PS4, I believe. Along with that, we're also getting a new buddy mode, which is really cool. So, I don't know how this works exactly, but I think you and a friend can jump in and take on some of the game's bosses uh, in the way of Sagat, Balrog, and Bison. So that's something different. So I'm a little excited about that because co-op gaming is what I'm all about. Yeah, also there is a new first-person Hadouken mode, which I don't know a hell of a lot about. Um, no one's really come out and said exactly what it is, but there is a picture on the back of the game box, and you can see uh, basically the front of Ryu's hands. Ryu, Ryu, I'm not sure I say Ryu, I'm from Australia. And he's doing the classic Hadouken pose, and you can see M. Bison in front of him. Um, and it kind of looks like the art style of uh, Street Fighter V, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. We'll see, what, we'll see what's going on there. So, yep, definitely number five, Ultra Street Fighter 2, the new challenges. Very excited. Coming in at number four has got to be Snipper Clips, cut it out together. Um, after the New York event, a lot of the games journalists that were there said that Snipper Clips was undoubtedly the sleeper hit of the show. It's an eShop title, it's not actually getting a physical release. And if you haven't seen it, it's really cool. It's a cooperative puzzle game. And basically you're these two really cute little shapes, one's yellow, one's red, and they're sort of anthropomorphic. They've got animated faces, little heels, little shoes, arms, and really expressive facial expressions that change depending on how you interact with each other. But the hook with this game is that basically as you overlap, you can cut away shapes, as if they were paper, and you use this to solve various problems throughout the game. So I've seen one where 
Um, basically, you need to cut it into a skinny shape so you can press a button which releases a pencil, and then the other person needs to be more like a, I suppose, like a, a U, so they can receive the pencil and put it into a sharpener. And that's how you solve one problem. Um, what I like about this game is obviously it's cooperative, but it's the kind of cooperative game, kind of like uh, Overcooked, which if you've ever played that, it's probably one of my favorite games on PS4 at the moment, where you need to work together. But the only way that's really achieved is by yelling at your friend who's playing and it just results in lots of laughter, lots of fun and just a really enjoyable gameplay experience. So I'm looking forward to doing that again. Um, shout out to my homie Cash Money. You know you and me are going to play Snipper Clips together so that's one to look out for. Um, and yeah, when I watched the Nintendo Minute and Treehouse preview coverage of this game, it looked like there's multiple ways to solve each problem, which is really cool. So you just need to sort of think creatively about how you're going to basically get to your goal in each level. So I'm all about that. So number four, snipper clips, cut it out together. That's a good one. Number three, I actually had Shovel Knight in place of here, but then a new trailer dropped today and boom, I had to bump Shovel Knight right out of there. Um, I'm still looking forward to it, so I might play it down the track, but when this one, when this trailer came out, I got hella excited at work. I stopped what I was doing and I watched it and then I showed a few people around me and like, check this shit out. And it has to be Celeste. Now if you don't know Celeste, I'm not surprised. It's made by um, a small indie studio, Matt Makes Games. Uh, it's made by one guy, I believe, Matt uh, Thornton. I follow him on Twitter. Shout out Matty. Uh, I love your games. And um, before Celeste, he made Towerfall Ascension. Um, and if you don't know Towerfall Ascension, again, it's an indie game from Matt Makes Games. It's multiplayer, up to four players, um, eight players in, in special circumstances, but basically the way I played it is on PS4. And you can play it um, just one-on-one -on -one against another person, and it's awesome. But this game really comes alive when three players and four players. That's when it's at its best. And it's an all-in brawl, basically a 2D battle arena, archery battle, and it's just crazy fun. It's Probably the game I've spent the most time with on my PS4, and many a nights have been spent playing uh, Towerfall. Now, Celeste is slightly different. It's not a multiplayer game, it's not a battling game, but it is a platformer in the vein of Super Meat Boy, Thousand and One Spikes, um, that sort of thing, where it's super, super hard platforming, it's super precise, and you spend a large portion of this game dying trying, dying, retrying, dying, retrying. Now to a lot of people that's not the kind of game they want, but for me, I'm a platformer at heart. Uh, you know, my all-time favorite game, Super Mario 3 and Super Mario World. Um, and Celeste just seems to nail platforming in its purest form. So I'm very, very excited about that. It's basically a 16-bit platformer. Um, the art direction is absolutely gorgeous. You need to check it out. It's just like it's going to be super hard. And I'm all about that. So this trailer dropped today. I saw it on Twitter on Matt Thornton's uh, page. And you know, I was really excited. Great music. Like, just the whole direction of this game is absolutely perfect. The art direction, the music, the gameplay. Um, I love pixel art. It's so charming. and. Matt Thornton just seems to nail it. I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Thornton. So Celeste has to get my number three spot. Um, super excited. No release date just yet, um, but it does say coming out in 2017. So it has to get the number three spot. Coming in at number two, and this is no big surprise. It's got to be Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, Zelda is my all-time favorite gaming series. Um, uh, going back to Nintendo 64, Ocarina of Time, um, I remember the Christmas that came out, I went crazy, I told everyone I need to have this, this is like my must have Christmas present. And my sisters and um, their boyfriends at the time, they sort of played it really well because they're like, Chris look we're really sorry we tried to get you the game but it's super popular and it's sold out everywhere and we couldn't get our hands on it. Um, and I bought it hook, like, and sinker, so I sort of like, basically came to terms that I wasn't going to get Zelda that Christmas, and lo and behold, 
Christmas Day comes, I'm unwrapping all my presents, I get to one, it's shaped like a Nintendo 64 game box. So, you know, I'm getting pretty excited. I unwrap it and I see that gold cover and I lose my shit. Um, I don't waste any time. I just go to my room, I plug it in, uh, I see that title screen, I hear that iconic music, and I just get lost in Hyrule and that 3D world and that game. And I spent many, many an hour, many a late night playing Zelda Ocarina of Time until I beat it. And that was my first Zelda. That was the first Zelda that I beat. And from then on, I've been um, a huge fan of the series. But beat Zelda Ocarina of Time, beat Wind Waker when that came out, played it again when they released it on the Wii U. Pretty much 100% of that game. Twilight Princess, when that was on the Wii, beat that. Absolutely loved it. Skyward Sword on the Wii U, I put a lot of time in. Um, really enjoyed the world. I know a lot of people are down on that game, but I still liked it. Didn't finish it. Got to the very last dungeon of that game, and for whatever reason, um, the difficulty spike was just huge, and I got frustrated and never went back to it. Um, and I don't have a Wii U anymore, so I can't finish that one, unfortunately. I'm really excited about Breath of the Wild. I mean, seeing this at E3 when they first dropped the trailer, and seeing the beautiful sort of shell shaded graphics, um, and just a huge open world, and just absorbing all the content as it's come out, the trailers, seeing the voice acting for the first time, which is very exciting. Um, learning that it's coming to Switch was obviously huge for me because that's where I want to play it. I want to play it on a new console. I don't want to be tied to motion controls and I want to have the freedom of going wherever I can. So I'm very excited about Zelda. Like, I don't have to say too much about it. If you're getting a Switch, chances are you're probably getting it to play Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, it's not my number one game which is surprising, but it's it's probably the one I'm gonna spend the most time with at launch. Before I get to my number one, I do have to give a couple of honorable mentions. Um, and yeah, these games were very close to making the list. I gotta give them a shout out. Um, straight up, Super Mario 8 Deluxe. That game was crack cocaine. I thought it was probably the best looking game on Wii U. Um, beautiful game, gameplay mechanics are flawless. It's the perfect kart racer without a doubt and I'm very excited to see it coming to the Switch with all the DLC, all the new characters, all the new courses. Um, Splatoon 2, very excited about. Never played Splatoon 1, I missed that boat, but watching the content and sort of seeing it evolve into almost an eSport, which I think what Nintendo basically wants this game to be is an eSport, so I can see this game being really, really big, so I'm probably going to get it when it comes out. Arms? Um, Man, that title, like, it's not the best title, but it is what it is. It's it's straightforward. Um, yeah, the more I see that game, the more I want to play it. Um, when the homie Tim Geddes was at the New York event, and I watched him and Jimmy Wong play that, it just looked like a barrel of fun. Um, you know, it's just that simple controls that are easy to pick up, but hard to master that Nintendo just seems to be sort of um, the best at doing. So I'm really excited about ARMS. People are saying that ARMS is to the fighting game what Splatoon was to shooters. So we saw how popular Splatoon is. I have no doubt that once ARM comes out and a few people have got their hands on it, no pun intended, it is gonna be uh, a bit of a, a sleeper hit. So ah, there we go again. Um, yeah, ARMS, gotta give a shout out to that. Super Mario Odyssey. Um, other than Zelda, Mario is, a, you know, that's a close second for my favorite game franchises. Oh my god. Super Mario 64, uh, when I saw that for the first time and, and jumping into the paintings and climbing trees and riding turtle shells and basically traversing a full 3D world, like, my mind was blown. Like, I, I remember very clearly going to my friend Jeremy Ewan's house, he won it in a Herald Sun competition, so he was the first guy I knew had a 64. He called me over, I'm like, dude, I gotta play this, show me what's up. And I remember seeing Mario running around, and it was just like, this is too much. Like, I, I almost didn't know how to, how to take it. I was literally speechless, but I knew I needed it. And I saved up, did a bunch of chores, um, 
basically traded in everything I had, picked up a 64 and Mario 64 at launch, not at launch, but as soon as I get my hands on it, and played the shit out of that. And I 100% of that game, I got 120 stars, uh, flew onto the roof, got Yoshi, got the 100 lives. So, um, you know, and then going on from there, played Mario Galaxy on the Wii, that was probably my favorite game, and Mario Galaxy 2. 3D Mario is a very special thing. So, Mario Odyssey looks like it's following those footsteps, so I gotta give a big shout out to that. I'm very excited of it. Um, albeit that Mario looks really weird when he's in the, the real world next to those New Yorkers, but whatever, it's Nintendo. I'm sure it'll be fun and interesting to say the very least. So, Super Mario Odyssey gets a shout out as an honorable mention. But, drum roll please. Number one, Super Bomberman R. Now, I know that was a bit of a surprise. You thought Zelda was going to be number one, but Bomberman is the jam. Next to Mario 64, Bomberman 64 was the game I played the most. Um, it was absolutely perfection when it comes to multiplayer. It's crack cocaine. Um, really simple controls, um, very simple strategy, but it is... It's multiplayer at its very best, and that's what I'm all about. I, like, I love having friends coming over, grabbing a controller each, and just sitting there and having a laugh as you sort of fight each other. And I think no game does that better than Bomberman. Every single time Bomberman's been on a platform, it's been amazing. Bomberman 64, beautiful. I had a story mode, you fought bosses. Really interesting traversal because Bomberman has no jump, so... It sort of revolved around placing bombs very carefully and bouncing over them, which was something I hadn't done in a game before. Um, and I'm very excited to see that come back to the Switch. Man, I am excited for this game. It's up to eight players on one Switch. There's a whole bunch of different configurations. You can have two per Switch with four Switches in the room. You can have eight Switches all connected locally. Uh, you can connect via the internet to play. You can have eight Joy-Cons and one Switch and everyone shares the screen. This game is just gonna be the ultimate take to a party, take to your mate's house, take it to work, play at lunchtime. This is gonna be the killer app. And um, I already saw that on EB website that it's pre-sold out. So even Zelda hasn't done that. So I'm not the only one who's excited about Bomberman. So I had to put it as my number one. It's multiplayer perfection. It's got that story mode, which is gonna be super fun. It's got the boss battles, which is gonna be amazing. It's online, it's local, couch co-op. Uh, I, I can already imagine going to like, you know, a midnight launch and taking my Switch along with me and playing with a bunch of people at, at EB Games or going to a convention, you know, finding all the people with the Switches and playing around a bomber man. Like, this shit is gonna be amazing. Like I said, um, the game I spent the most time with on my PS4 was Towerfall of Ascension, and that's because it was a four-player battle game. And Bomberman's the same, so I have to put it as my number one. So I'm very, very excited. Um, and that's it, guys. I hope you like my top five. I am bursting with excitement to get the Switch in my hands next week. Um, yeah. Oh. <sighs> it's... It's been a long wait, and I'm very excited that we're, you know, by the time this goes up, less than a week away. So, yeah, I hope you liked the video. Give me a like, give me, you know, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date and watch me unbox my Switch with excitement and grab my impressions on all the games and the hardware. And, um, yeah, I suppose that's it for me. It's your boy Big Time. Out. Peace. Bitch, I'm, 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 bitch,